lying. When it comes to the topic, Robert Feldman is an expert. His research on lying has been widely published over 30 years, and it has looked at many facets of this thing that, according to his research, each of us does every day, more than once. But are people lying more today than in the past? Here's what he thinks. Yes, I'm really interested in how people use lying as a kind of social tactic and how it colors what we do in our everyday lives. It turns out that people lie all the time, not just presidents, but um, other people as well. Um, we use it as a kind of social tactic to smooth out social situations, to make other people feel good about themselves, and in some cases to make ourselves look better. You mentioned the president. We often think, I think, globally as a society uh, of, of politicians, we'll finger them first as people who, who lie most often, whether, you know, it's Bill Clinton, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, or even more recently with President Trump saying would, wouldn't. Some people looked at that as a lie, not just a, a misspeaking. Um, do politicians lie more today than you think in your previous research? Well, in some cases, clearly. But I think generally, the amount of deception that goes on is increasing because it appears we have given politicians greater license to lie. It doesn't seem to Meaning bother... That the public isn't holding them accountable more often. Exactly. Um, we seem to let po politicians get away with lying. It doesn't seem to bring about the kinds of sanctions that it once would have. And it's just sort of generally in the culture, it just appears to be easier to lie. So, I mean, I know when you started your research, you were researching a book about a decade ago, and you looked at the Nixon tapes, you listened to them. So when you say that, do you, do you think Nixon was held accountable in a different way than maybe politicians today are? I do, actually. Um, I, I think the, um, the reaction to his being deceptive was much greater than what we'd find today. And it's not like we say it's fine for politicians to lie, but I just think that, generally speaking, it's easier for a politician to get away with lying than it was in the past. Do you think that's technology in the news cycle where it's just moving so quickly? That's, that's part of it. I think, um, for me, a turning point was the Clinton episode, which you bring up. Um, because what happened was it's not so much that he lied and got found out, but he went on to be one of the most prominent, the most um, accepted, and the most liked politicians. Um, for a while, he was number one in terms of, of, of who we esteemed in terms of politicians. So the lesson was that you can lie, you can be found out, but it doesn't matter all that much. So is there research that says why we do this, why we respond this way to this type of behavior? Well, I think it's just it's norms in society. And um, what happens is that when you see a very prominent figure get away with something and not be sanctioned or punished in any way, it just makes it easier for the rest of us to be deceptive, to lie. It just seems like it's okay, because they're not such terrible consequences. I think in general it's safe to say people don't like being lied to, but your research says that people lie all the time. Um, so how do, we, how do we come to terms with this? I think it's, it's one of the, the great paradoxes. We teach our children that lying is bad, that you should never tell a lie. Uh, we talk about icons in American history, um, Abe Lincoln, George Washington, uh, yeah, never told a lie. Um, but the other part of this is that we also tell our kids as they're growing up, well, you know, grandma's coming over and she's going to bring you a gift. t-shirt on. Yeah, exactly. You know, tell her you love it, um, even if you don't. And so kids get a very um, contradictory kind of message. And it's confusing at first, but I think ultimately they learn that lying in some ways is acceptable. And so I think that, um, in fact, lying becomes a kind of social skill. You <laughs> want your kids to be able to lie in the right circumstances. But the white lie you just point out, you know, grandma gets you a t-shirt and you wear it proudly and then strip it off as soon as she leaves. Um, that, I think we can agree, is a different type of lying than doing something that's going to cause some type of larger harm. Oh, absolutely. There, there are different gradations of kinds of lies. There are white lies that society does say are acceptable and that, in fact, we are happy to 
hear those lies. You know, when someone tells us, oh, you did a fantastic job, we don't delve into that. And it may be truthful, it may not be truthful, but we're ready to accept it. Um, but there are other kinds of lies that are much more harmful um, when someone lies to um, uh, give themselves an advantage over you um, or to mislead you in some way. I think most of us would say that is, that is totally inappropriate. So what advice would you give to people to be more truthful in their everyday interactions? Well, it's tough. It's tough to give advice because in some ways you want people to understand that white lies are appropriate and, and okay. Um, but you really do want them to know that lies ultimately have a cost. And in fact, that lying um, is one of those things that in a relationship can have really detrimental effects because you want to be able to trust people. You want to be honest and you want to be open. And even small lies, I think, have some kind of cost. So I think you want to discourage people generally from lying. Because I think, as your research has pointed out, one lie sno can snowball, right? Absolutely. Because yeah. it sort of reinforces that, yeah. oh, this is okay? Yeah, we, we have research that shows very clearly that the more often you lie, the more it leads to other lies. And um, if